Hello. These slides are a brief overview to the learner review process, formerly known as coursing, as your child moves from S2 into S3 and begins study for national qualifications in S4. Along with the slides, you will also find the curriculum guide for S3 and S4 and a copy of the course sheet on the school website. My name is Catherine Crystal and I am the Deputy Head Teacher with responsibility for learning and teaching, curriculum and learner reviews. And in this PowerPoint, I'll be talking about how you can support your child to be successful. Curriculum, national qualifications and the course choice process. And what support we here at St Augustine's provide for your child. When schools are open, it's very important that your child attends school every day. It's important also not to be late. A day off every fortnight over the entire year or being half an hour late every day can add up to the equivalent of nine weeks lost teaching and learning time. During online or home learning or blended learning, it's important that your child has at least five hours of learning a day. But this should be broken into two sets of two and a half hours with plenty of breaks in between. No child should be sat in front of a computer screen for more than two hours at a time. In some households, this could be two and a half hours in the morning, two and a half hours in the afternoon. In others, it might be afternoons and evenings. It's important that the time your child spends learning meets not only their needs, but the needs of the whole family to minimise stress. It's important that your child dresses for school. And in normal time, this means wearing full school uniform. In home learning, it means getting fully dressed and not working in your pyjamas. How we dress affects our disposition for work, rest and play. If we get dressed fully, then psychologically it prepares us for learning and work. It's important that your child is fully prepared and ready to learn. So please ensure that your child has plenty of rest and has breakfast and lunch. Please make sure that your child has access to a digital device, Wi-Fi, pens and paper. And it's important that you contact the school if you are experiencing difficulty in any of these areas. An essential part of learning is to complete all homework and learning tasks. Learning is a partnership between the teacher and the child and is not one sided. These tasks embed learning and help your child to retain information and skills. And the final point is to encourage your child to enjoy learning and be proud of St Augustine's High School. When your child is at school, it's important that they take part in extracurricular clubs and opportunities to take part in school celebrations, because these are essential for their skills development and for their mental and physical health and well-being. So when we're learning from home during lockdown, it's important to replicate this. Share schools communications with them and encourage them to keep in contact with their teachers through Teams, email or by phoning the school. Encourage your child to exercise and pursue any hobbies throughout the week. And most importantly, please talk and listen to your child. The big picture. Education in Scottish schools is divided into the broad general education, which spans preschool to S3 
and the senior fees from S4 upwards. At the moment, your child is transitioning, moving from the broad general education to the senior fees. And most will be working at present within level four and some pupils at level three. These levels should be achieved as they move into S4. Within these levels, where children develop academically and their skills, your child will also ch be changing to become successful learners, confident individuals, effective contributors and responsible citizens. Parents and teachers in partnership work to ensure that our children are safe, healthy, achieving, nurtured, active, respected, responsible and included. Teachers often refer to these as well-being indicators. They are essential if your child is to achieve. National qualifications. National qualifications come in all sorts of forms. The important thing to remember here are the levels, which you will see in the left-hand column. In the broad education, we refer to them as levels, but within the senior phase, they are called SCQF levels, Scottish Credit Qualification Framework. If your child has achieved level four by the end of S3, then they will be looking at the SCQF level five in S4. And so we'll be studying for national fives, for skills for work national five, and for um, national progression awards at level five. If your child achieved level three by the end of S3, then in S4, they will be working towards national fours, skills for work national fours, and national progression awards at level four. And you will see as they move into S5 and S6, pupils will be studying at school or at college for hires, advanced hires, national certificates, national progression awards, modern apprenticeships, foundation apprenticeships. So you'll see from this chart the types of qualifications at each level. As well as their subjects, all teachers have a responsibility to develop and teach literacy, numeracy, health and well-being and digital skills. We aim to ensure that all pupils achieve level five in literacy and numeracy by the time they leave school, and we have an excellent track record in doing so. Furthermore, our Developing the Young Workforce Officers, DYW for short, and our pupil support leaders will work with your child to explore their interests, and expose your child to the variety of careers and career pathways open to them. And over the next two years, they have the opportunity to attend careers fairs, to build their CV, and to take part in mock interviews. In addition, some subjects have focus weeks where they may work on enterprise projects or have visiting speakers from businesses or attend events such as the mock trials in the Modern Studies Department. So the course choice. Every pupil has to study one period a week for personal social education, two periods a week of religious education, and two periods a week of physical education. They must then choose seven subjects from each of the columns below. Each subject is taught for four periods a week. 
Now in column A and column B, you will see that there is maths and English and every pupil must study maths and English. Column C is our social subjects department. Here, a child may choose to study geography, history or modern studies. For some pupils, they may be advised to study for a National Progression Award in Wellbeing and the pupil support leader for your child will discuss this with you. Column D is our science column. A science you may not be familiar with is science and health. This is a general science qualification, a blend of biology, chemistry and physics topics and is very useful for children who do not intend to um, use science for their future career. Some children may be advised to study childcare or may opt for childcare as they may already know that this is the direction they wish to follow. Column E is our creative and aesthetics column. And this includes an additional four periods of physical education for children who wish to follow um, a career path in either sport, such as sport coaching or sport science or PE. Our modern foreign languages are also in this column. And at the bottom, you will see there is the qualification of Duke of Edinburgh. And this is at bronze level. It is not a National 4 qualification and is only suitable for some periods for pupils. Column F is our technical column. However, you will see the addition of Spanish, French and chemistry in this column. And this is allow, to allow some pupils to take either uh, two, two languages or if they are wishing to pursue a career in the health industry, such as uh, dentistry, nursing or medicine, allows them to take biology and chemistry. Now, in doing so, they may miss out on the opportunity to take a technical subject. And so you'll see in column G, we have the addition of administration and computing to allow them to take a technical subject. Now, we aim to run all of these courses. However, we are a small to medium sized school and this may not be possible. If, for example, only three or four pupils choose to take history in column C, then we will be unable to run this subject. In preparing your child to make their choice, we follow this current programme. During December and January, pupil support leaders work on careers and preparation for the learning review. And the lessons will be delivered in these matters. Through January to February, pupil support leaders will be chatting with your children through Teams, um, or maybe calling um, the child to discuss what their choices will be. And the date for completing these courses is the 2nd of March. Here is a breakdown of the sorts of subjects that will be covered in January. When talking to your child about the choices that they may wish to make, it's important to remember, first of all, that it is the child's choice. As parents, your role is to advise. Please encourage them to take subjects that they will enjoy, but also that they will succeed in. Subjects that are right for your child are ones that relate to their current interests, their abilities and their strengths. Think ahead to what they might like to do when they leave school.
At present, there are skill shortages in the following areas, health and social work, transport, manufacturing, financial services, engineering and teaching. So help them think ahead, not just about what they might like to do when they leave school, but where the jobs will be. At the end of this PowerPoint, there are a list of websites that you may find useful. If they are keen to follow a particular career, check which subjects and qualifications they may, might need or find helpful to get into careers or courses they are interested in after school. Remember, their pupil support leader will also be advising them on this. And think about the skills that they'll need to be successful in the future. Please discourage your child from choosing a subject just because they like or dislike the teacher. They may not even have the same teacher as they move into S3. Again, please discourage for your child from choosing a subject so that they can be in the same class as their friends. Firstly, this may not be possible. And secondly, it may mean that they are picking a subject for which they are not suited. And please don't worry if your child doesn't seem to have any clear career ideas just yet. The course choice columns are designed to be broad and general and to keep their options open. And please don't limit their future career options by thinking that some subjects and careers are either only for girls or only for boys. As parents and carers, your help is essential. Please talk to your child about their progress and their future career path. Encourage them to keep their options open as possible. Your child is still very young and children will develop over the next two to three years and change their minds. Please encourage them to talk to their teachers and the career advisor if you need any more information or have any worries about their subject. Encourage them to keep asking for help and advice. This is not a problem. This is our job. And finally, here are some websites that you may find useful in discussing with your child their choices for the future. Your child is already familiar with My World of Work, as this is the key website that we use in class. Again, please do not hesitate to contact the school if you have any questions or queries. Thank you.